Good morning, everybody. It is New Year's Eve. Uh, this crap year is almost over. And uh, yeah, kind of happy about that. So, uh, got a video topic today around fuel pressure. Um, you know, this is, I think, something probably a lot of you guys already know, but for whatever reason, this has actually come up two different times uh, in the last week as I've looked at some logs from a few different people. Uh, and, and it's, you know, just something I wanted to, to teach about. So, uh, what we're going to talk about today is kind of how to, how to understand what to expect out of your fuel pressure under different operating conditions, uh, and, and how to determine if you're, you're having a, some kind of a fuel loss, uh, along the way that is ultimately causing you issues. So what I've got here, this is a, a data log from a gentleman named Darren, uh, shout out. And, uh, this is a naturally aspirated combo, Holly Terminator X system. And he's saying, hey, you know, the car is running okay, but when I, you know, get into the throttle heavy, uh, you know, I'm having a lot of issues. It's, it's stumbling, it's just not happy, and, and I'm not sure what's going on. So I said, okay, yeah, send me a data log, let's take a look. So what I've got on, on the screen right now, I'm, I'm just looking at two things. I'm looking at uh, your, your manifold pressure and uh, your fuel pressure. And the reason I want to look at these two things first is because I want to explain to you guys the relationship between these two with uh, a normal vacuum-operated uh, fuel pressure regulator. So most of you guys, you know, on these Fox bodies uh, and in most cars, you're going to have a fuel pressure regulator for a return-style fuel system. Uh, and its job is basically after the fuels come from the tank and up to the, the rails and the engine's got whatever it needs, on the way back to the return, you have to block off that line with the fuel pressure regulator uh, that tries to maintain pressure on the front side of that feed so that your your fuel rails you know see some consistency but its job is not to maintain an exact fuel pressure at all times it's not going to do that uh, it modulates as your vacuum goes up or down so uh, again what you're seeing here is blue line is your manifold pressure green line is your fuel pressure and while the numbers at this point aren't that important, the relationship is. And what you notice is that anytime the manifold pressure is higher, so is the fuel pressure. And when the map is showing a really low KPA, we show a lower fuel pressure. And this is totally normal. So this is also why, like, when you guys go set your fuel pressure, you're supposed to remove the vacuum line uh, from you know, from the fuel pressure regulator so that you're essentially simulating wide open throttle, you know, no boost, no vacuum, just kind of 100 kPa flat, you know, atmospheric pressure type deal. Uh, and, and that's kind of what you should do because as soon as you put that vacuum line back on, your pressure is going to drop down. And it's not an exact science, but rule of thumb is that usually for about every two inches of vacuum you have, your fuel fuel pressure will go down about one psi on a you know fuel injected system like this. So not perfect, but you know that's ballpark. So you know stock cam usually has somewhere you know between maybe 17, 18, 19 uh, inches of vacuum at idle. So yeah, your your fuel pressure is going to drop at idle. You know somewhere probably between you know seven, eight, nine uh, psi uh, once you hook that regulator up with the vacuum line. So that's totally normal. So anyways, this is the expected behavior. Map goes down, fuel pressure goes down. Map goes up, fuel pressure goes up. And we can basically look through this entire log that we can see that that trend holds true. Uh, I've got another good spike here. One goes up, the other goes up. Here it goes down, the other goes down. So everything's looking pretty normal. And we're, we're cruising along here. And so now let's look at the actual numbers. So at this point, cruising, steady state, you know, 1700 RPMs. Uh, we're sitting here at about 40, 40 PSI. So real stable, uh, RPMs go up just a little bit uh, right here. And so the vacuum changes a little bit. So we're down to 39 PSI, still pretty normal. And then this is where it gets crazy. So then, and I'm gonna zoom in on this part of the log right here. Now Darren makes a, a full throttle pull. And what you notice is that right there, your map goes all the way up, so your fuel pressure spikes along with it like it should. So now he's up at 48 PSI, but that only lasts for, you know, looking down here about a half a second, and then the pressure starts to drop uh, pretty fast, and then it drops really, really fast. And by here, I mean, we're all the way down to 27 PSI, uh, and that really shouldn't happen. And it actually just continues to get worse and worse and worse, and at its worst point, 
he's only having 18 PSI fuel pressure. So now if I turn on the RPM on top of this, you can see how much the, the car was struggling to do anything. In fact, even though he's matted to the floor this entire pull, this is 100% throttle all through this range. You can see that the RPMs come up quickly while he still has fuel pressure. And then right here where the pressure starts to drop off, you notice there's a flat line. The RPMs just kind of stumble. They, it kind of stops climbing even though he's still full throttle. And then it, it kind of starts to go up again. And then it flat lines and stumbles again. And then it actually starts to drop off completely. Because at this point, there's such low fuel pressure. This system just can't really get anything done. So it, it just kind of drops off and it, it can't get there. And this is just a, a severe issue on fuel supply. And the reason that it was even able to overcome this. Go on, Reggie. Go. Go, cat. <laughs> uh, so, so the only reason that uh, you know the system was able to overcome this at all is the the closed loop compensation on the Holly, which is its kind of shining point, really, of the whole EFI system. Uh, it it tried to respond very quickly, uh, seeing that the air to fuel ratio wasn't right, so it threw a bunch more fuel at it. Um, and and you can actually see it all the way in the learn. I mean, the learn right here is at basically zero. And the system from having made previous pulls has already figured out to just peg out uh, and, and throw as much learn as it's allowed to currently in this tune. Um, but even with that, you know, it kind of gets over the hurdle a little bit, but not much. And if you look at his AFR, it just goes all over the place. You know, he, he tips in. Uh, so there's a little, little lean spike, but nothing, you know, it, it's just kind of normal. It actually goes a little rich right here. Uh, but it, then it just, it's really erratic from that point. I mean, it's up to 14, air to fuel ratios down to 11, kind of stumbles around some more through here, pretty jittery. And then it just goes stupid lean right here. And at this point, his pressure's dropped off so far again. The RPMs, not only are they not flat, they're actually dropping quickly. Uh, cause it's just a complete loss of fuel at that point. There's just not enough pressure to maintain anything. Uh, and then, you know, ultimately once he lets out of the throttle, uh, the RPMs kind of settle back down, fuel pressure comes back up, uh, you know, and then it starts to behave, you know, pretty normal again. Uh, but then the same thing happens, you know, we work our way through here, and then he tries to make another pull. It's actually where the log chopped off, but same thing. He makes the pull, comes up, fuel pressure climbs for a minute like it should, and then it just sinks. And it's all the way down to 17 PSI again goes crazy lean and even with you know 30 percent closed loop compensation plus 34 percent learn and you know it doing everything it can i mean at this point it's up to 50 percent compensation it doesn't matter it can open that injector a ton but if there's no pressure going through the rail it's not going to help so basically the, the whole point of this video was to show you in a naturally aspirated uh, setup what to expect as far as fuel pressure in relation to your uh, your map sensor and if you're noticing that you have an issue under, you know, moderate or heavy throttle or full throttle, uh, and you're not sure what's going on, take a look at your fuel pressure in the log, see what's going on. Now, if you guys have chosen not to add a fuel pressure sensor, uh, which I know doesn't come with like the, you know, the uh, 937F box body kit, go get one. Go, go hit up low dollar motorsports. They've got some really affordable, uh, you know, pressure transducers you can throw on there. You could do one for oil and one for fuel. It's the, the same part number. Uh, you know, your Holly's already ready, you know, wired up and ready to do that. So, you know, go get a fuel pressure, uh, you know, transducer and, and see what it does. But I guess if in the absence of that, if you notice that you're just going crazy, crazy lean out of nowhere and your base fuel map is pretty smooth and your target is still, you know, normal, but it just goes really lean, it's probably fuel pressure. Spend a few bucks, man. You spent, you know, over a thousand dollars to get this Holly in your car minimum. Go and spend the extra few bucks, hit up low dollar, and you know, throw another sensor on there, log it, see what it's doing. So guys, hope this helps. Good luck. Godspeed.